My name is Jan Harzan. I'm the executive director for MUFON. We are a scientific research organization that basically collects sighting reports from the public and then goes and investigates them. Our mission statement as an organization is the scientific study of UFOs for the benefit of humanity. And we have three primary goals. We investigate UFO reports, we promote research into the UFO subject, and we educate the public on our findings. MUFON is really more just left of center, where we try to take a scientific approach by collecting the data first off, and then reviewing the data, investigating the data, and making sure that what we're seeing is actually something that's truly an unknown. We have 3,000 members worldwide. Many scientists, physicists, PhDs, metallurgists, biologists, all the way down to just the average citizen who really wants to get involved. Some of those have chosen to become field investigators, and they go through our field investigative training courses. They become part of the team in their state or country where they reside, and they actually get engaged in going out and meeting this phenomena head on. We receive about 500 to 1,000 reports per month from around the world. Field investigators will take the case, generally review it, uh, try to come up with a hypothesis, checking star charts, and we'll go put an investigation in place to determine what exactly happened. We've recently formed a science review board, and that board is made up of scientists from around the United States and around the world to review some of our more significant cases and try to render an opinion on them. What we'd like to do is be more outbound, more outspoken in terms of the really true UFO cases. So MUFON is moving forward with this approach and we'll be publishing papers in these different areas to allow the general public and even the scientific community to be able to be challenged by what we're finding. That's the strength of MUFON as an organization is being really the truth seekers of the UFO field. Events taking place in Mexico have had extraordinary implications for exopolitics. Perhaps the greatest sightings flap in history has occurred just outside the borders of the United States. An entire nation was given an intense indoctrination into the extraterrestrial phenomena. The Mexican military and civilian government became involved. No one is more qualified to present this history than Jaime Musan. He also works as an investigative journalist and an anchorman and general producer of the television show Tercer Milenio that is broadcast via the Televisa network to all Latin American countries. So let me welcome to the stage Jaime Musan. Thank you very much. Well, as you know, I am a television journalist. I've been involved in the most important journalistic programs in Mexico, like 24 Hours with Jacobo Sabludowski's uh, The Walter Cronkett of Mexico. Just uh, recently passed away. He's considered the master. I also became involved in 60 Minutes. And uh, as it was said in the introduction, in 1991, I realized at the moment of the total solar eclipse that many people with cameras in the streets were able to record UFOs. I presented that videos in the television and asked the Mexican people to get more videos to observe the sky, to record whatever it was there. And from then on, it was not just the flap with the interest of the people of Mexico recording these UFOs what really changed my life. I became depository of all these videos. I received videos not just from everywhere in Mexico, but now from around the world. At this moment, 
We have a television show that is two hours long. Every Sunday night, prime time, on the national television, open television. Through that, we present the news, the breaking news from around the world. Besides that, we have a television channel in the internet, tercermilenio.tv, where we produce more than 40 to 50 hours per week of all the investigations around this phenomenon. From uh, the activity of the UFOs in the space to everywhere and anywhere in the world. And through that, we are able to have even a better connection with all the Spanish-speaking people in the world. Now it's not just Mexico, it's everywhere. Right now, this symposium is being streamed live to Latin America and the Spanish-speaking world. Yesterday, we had between five to 10,000 people connected to this symposium. And today, probably, it's going to be more. I think it's the way to follow. I think we have to do that. I, I think we have to increase the exposure of what is happening around the world to this phenomenon and let people decide the importance of this. And I can tell you for sure that in Mexico is happening and in Latin America too. I think there are good times in front of us because we are being very successful into this. Our television show now has four million, four million viewers every Sunday night. And I think it's something that should be happening in the USA. Not just the most powerful country on the earth, but also the most communicated with more resources. What is amazing is that the media here is not interested in this phenomenon. It's something very difficult to understand just the only way is to know the, all the interests that there are in the government and probably the military too. And besides that, all the prejudices that media has regarding this phenomenon. But I believe with the alternative media like internet, this is going to change very soon. It all depends in us, the, the civil society, probably the government and the military and the people from the big industries and the money won't do it, but we as citizens of the world can do it. We have the way to do it now. And I hope some will follow in the USA to do all of this. What you are going to see, most of the segments that I will present were obtained this year, probably some of them last year, most of them. There are some that are so important that I want to repeat, especially since I haven't been present in a symposium of move on of, uh, for more than 15 years. I want to thank Jan Harson and Erika, because thanks to them, I am here to present you all of this. And as I said, it's not just my work. It's the work of many investigators in my program, like Fernando Correa, who is he, here with me, Alberto Garcia, and also uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Santiago Iturria, who has connections in places like Russia, South America, and many other. And he receives so much of this information every week and also help us to decide when an evidence is real or not. We have the biggest file in the world regarding this phenomenon. And thanks to that, most of the evidence that I will present, I can tell you, not for, with 99% certainty that this absolutely real. I'm going to start with the space. I like to start with the space, with the evidence in the space, because they are indisputable. 
irrefutable. And I want to start now with a video that is not from this year, not from last year, from three years ago, but many people here ask me, are you going to present the UFOs in front of the sun? And I said, no, why not? I said, well, because it's old. Well, but it's very important, okay. Then I decided to open this presentation with this evidence. This happened first in March of 2012. As you can see, a huge sphere, bigger than Jupiter, is close to the sun, taking energy from the sun. NASA couldn't explain this. They bubbled when they tried to, to say what it was. It was there for 72 hours, taking energy from the sun, and then suddenly leaves, leaving behind turbulence. You can clearly see how all of this is happening. Freeman Dyson in 1960 predicted that this was going to happen that in the future we would see black spheres taking energy from the sun. As you can see here, this sphere, which is even bigger than the other one, is taking energy, and we can see the flames around the sphere. Very briefly, just to let you know that there are huge, huge spheres, motor ships, that come here and take the energy. And of course, they are responsible for all of this. This video is from August of 2014. As you can see, this object is in front of the comet churjenov gerasimenko that is there, the Rosetta mission. And in November, the little uh, probe, Fileta, uh, was sent to there, but this was recorded in August. August, what is this? What is this in front of this comet? It's not human. It is clearly an object. This video was released by the agency in Europe, the space agency in Europe. Then we can see this object landed in the comet churjenov gerasimenko There are so many mysteries around this comet that is now being studied by the Europeans. You can clearly here see that object standing there. It means that they are interested too for some reason, or they are observing us being there. What is this? Have you seen it? Why this is not in the news? Uh, this is official material. Fortunately, Fernando Correa found this directly from the agency in Europe, and we were able to, to present it. These are some of the sounds of this comet, strange sounds that come from within. A new mystery is at the Ceres planetoid, or asteroid, as you want. This is in the, uh, the asteroid belt. As you can see, they found these lights inside a crater. You can see that even at night, they are very bright inside the crater. NASA doesn't know what is this. Mas NASA has been conducting a survey and 40% of the people say that this is unexplainable. It's not ice, it's not water, it's not a re reflection, it's not a volcano. What is this? These lights inside this crater, NASA doesn't have an answer. You can check this. You can go to internet and check the lights in Ceres. This is also an old evidence, but it's my very favorite one. 
Probably you remember on November the 9th, 2007, at the Gusev Crater in Mars, the spirit rover took this picture. Nobody, nobody has been able to explain this to me. When we get a close-up here, we can clearly see there, standing, sitting, what looks to be a woman. This is not a rock. A woman in Mars? Come on, are you crazy? What is this? Tell me. Is this a rock? You can see the dress, you can see the hand. With some filters, you can even see the color of it. This is, a, for me, one of the most important evidences ever. Less than a mile away, the spirit took this picture. What is that? In the middle of nothing. It is like a house from the earth, made with stones, one stone over the other. A rustic house. What is there? What is that? Nobody has explained that. NASA doesn't even say anything around this. I think it's very clear. And besides that, we have found many more domes in, in, in Mars. Even from the first day, why they didn't send the Curiosity to see this dome? This is one of the first pictures that Curiosity took from Mars. And we can clearly see there, this huge structure has to be huge. That is there. That is not a rock. I should, I would have sent the Curiosity just to take a look. Instead of that, they send the Curiosity to the other side. Another mystery in Mars, something that nobody talks about it. As you remember, in 2004, the rovers, Curiosity, I mean, Opportunity and Spirit, were sent to Mars in a mission that was going to last three months. The opportunity is still working. The spirit, the spirit worked for seven and a half years. Why they thought they were not going to work? Because after just a few weeks, they would be covered in dust, and the solar panels would stop working. OK? That's the way they are. But then, someone Somebody, something comes to their robes and cleans them. <laughs> you know what NASA says? It's the wind. Have you seen the wind clean your car? <laughs> Have you taken your car to the highway? Oh, I'm going to clean my car and let's, let me go around, you know, with the wind, no? And this is true. There, there is no explanation why every time, every time, not just once, but many times, they, you see, now it's completely clean. Now it's covered, now it's completely clean. You can see here, And when they think it's not go or it's not working anymore, something or someone cleans. There are many pictures where you can see these strange UFOs going around Mars. All of these are official. I mean, these are real. What can that be? In Mars, a balloon, a helicopter, an airplane? Irrefutable evidence produced by NASA. Now let me tell you about this. It's very interesting what happened or is happening in Russia. In January 31st, accidentally, uh, it was found in a mine, in a coal mine, what looks to be a UFO, petrified UFO, of one and a half meter, uh, a little bit more than uh, one and a half yard, almost. They investigated this UFO. They made analysis. And it looks like 
This is 250 million years old. They took it to a museum, and in this museum, as you can see, a little door, after 77 days, a little door opened, and nobody, and a petrified, you can see the, the little triangular door that it was just in the morning, they came to see it, and it was in the floor. How can that happen? And it is very clear it's a system that is still working somehow after 250 million years. Well, just recently, that's September the 9th, near Volgogrado, near the river Osa, or it was found this disc, petrified, which is now under investigation. They are gonna take this to a museum in Volgogrado because they found metal inside of this object that looks like a UFO. It was all over the media, like the other one. It was presented in the television in Russia. As you can see, there are metal inside. We are afraid if nothing is done, this UFO is going to disappear soon. It was found in a very far away place where they have found Oh, they have seen, excuse me, they have seen many, many UFOs. There are many sightings in this area. Okay, now let's continue. I have to Keep on going fast to present everything I brought for you. I don't have time to, to spend in every single evidence because it's too much. But now, as you can see, the, the cameras, the security cameras are recording incredible things around the world, like orbs, orbs that are invisible to the eye. For example, in this case in China, this family saw this sphere, this light, and then they came out to try to catch it, but they never saw it. You see, it's moving, it's intelligent. You cannot imagine how many times they do this to us. If you have felt a present probably is there, this is in Mexico, You can see these spheres going, moving, checking, investigating, and they are invisible to the eye. Later on, I will present you some spectacular videos of invisible UFOs. Now with the new technology, the infrared technology, now with the Yukon Rangers, the night vision, the FLIR, the thermal cameras, you can see so much more than we did in the past. The orbs are everywhere. In Russia, in Mexico, all of these are just from the last few months. The orbs is the most common sighting just uh, uh, a little while ago, uh, Preston was talking about the UFOs on the water. This was in September 2011. We decided to include this because we can see one of these orbs chasing a boat. But they just not chase boats, they chase cars, they chase uh, railroads, 
You can see here, this is Argentina. This is from, uh, from this year. You can see this or chasing the car. In Capilla del Monte, you can see these orbs chasing railroads. In Russia, we have different videos. You can see the date and the place in every single video. And this has become uh, a bit common in Russia, being chased by Orbs, this is a different video, but it's just about the same. And believe me, they are, they are real. And people know, and this is presented in the television, we have now another. This is flying. This is an old video too, from 2009, but it's also very important because we wonder all these orbs, where they come from? Who, who transport them? And in this video from Pedro Hernandez, outside Mexico City, you can see this object releasing hundreds of orbs on both sides. This happened after an earthquake in 2009. This little object is uh, spinning, and then the orbs came and fly, flew around the big object or the motor ship or whatever, and you see, you see they circle them and they go. Then they came back and they made a formation, a fleet. At least two different people recorded this event because, of course, many people say, oh, wow, this is created, you know, this is digital, this is... No. In the very recent years, we have seen these orbs now making groups, probably creating motor ships because others, other lights come from within or go inside. These groups, I believe this is technology the, that is very far away from us. This is just from August. We don't know how to call them, then we say they are mother chiefs. This is the second video from the same event. This is, all of these videos, I believe, are from Moscow. There are many cases in Russia where we have six, 10, even 20 videos from the same event. In Russia, people are really open. Mm -hmm. This is... 9 of September 2014, we can see this so-called motor ship releasing objects in the middle of the sea, and the UFOs are going inside. This has become very, very common, this kind of sightings with many lights making a group, making a, 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 a body. I don't know if they created a single motor ship or, or, or what. Pani ma tak niesamowite zbliżenia, że widać mm -hmm. elementy, które spadają i się palą. This is in Poland. No ona też nie wie co to jest, też to filmują. Ale z tych elementów da się coś tam... Nie, mówi za daleko. This 
this is when everything started. We can see these UFOs coming inside the group. They go away, they go around, and they come back. We have many sightings in the area of St. Petersburg of this kind. You see, this is what we present to the Mexican people every Sunday night. This is just a collection of UFOs going inside, coming from the group to the outside, coming inside. This is in St. Petersburg. Look at that. I say this is indisputable, and this is why we call them motor ships, because we don't know how to call them. And in this case, at least four people recorded the same moment when you have this UFO coming inside the group. This is a second video. I had to choose from so much to present you what I think is important. We had so many sightings in Chelyabinsk before the meteorite, the meteorite stroke there in 2013. 2012, we had so many in Chelyabinsk, so many. Especially December 23rd, 2011, when we had this UFO going around the city, and at least 20, 20 people recorded that. In St. Petersburg, we had sightings in 2011, 12, 13 and 14. We didn't have them this year. Around the same time, that is from the last days in March to the beginning of April. This is one of my very favorites. This is 2014. This was recorded by an eight-year-old boy. You can see that motor ship or huge UFO standing in Martinez in France. And the boy stayed in the balcony of his house whole day. You can see how this inclines and then leaves and then it will come back again and again. And this little boy, eight years old, who deserved an award, got the UFO many, many times. I We thought was the video of the year last year. It's back again, and you can see the, 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 the airplanes going around, and but the UFO is right there. At night, it means that the little boy was there the whole day. You see now it's going to leave again with the same kind of movement. It gets inclined and then leaves. In Ukraine, exactly the same place where we have a war going on, very recently, we have seen many, many signals and many UFOs, many UFOs. It has happened three times. It happened with the revolution in 1917. It happened again 
1989, when the separation of uh, uh, or the the end of the Soviet Union, and it happened now uh, with the beginning of this war. And look, for example, this extraordinary video recorded in Kiev, in Ukraine, March 6, 2014. A huge cigar-shaped object. Very clearly moving above the city. Kiev. In Kiev also, we have the beginning of this so-called uh, apocalypse uh, uh, sounds, or I don't know if you were, uh, if you know about what happened from 2011 to, to this moment, we have these sounds coming from the sky, uh, but it seems that they started in, in Kiev in August 11, 2011, these kind of sounds. We have these spirals. Uh, they have happened like uh, five to ten times since 2009 to now. They are probably signals. We don't know what they are, but it happened again in Ukraine. We have so many sightings in Sevastopol, which is a marine base for Russia at the Crimea Peninsula. We had this sighting in Ukraine too, where you can see this strange object, looks like a, like a rocket, a missile, but it's, it's not, because suddenly it stops and creates a cross. I'm sorry to go so fast. We could see so much more of what is happening there. But there are so many other very interesting subjects like uh, aerial security. We've seen these orbs coming very close to helicopters like this, to airplanes. Sometimes very close. This is another one, May 2014. We have these photographs of a very clear UFO going very near an airplane in Mexico, in Guadalajara. You can see the size of it, the shape. Fortunately, we also have video of some of these events. But they come very close to the airplanes and probably some crashes were produced by, by them. For example, this is from December 2014, Guadalajara. 
and it's a sequence of photographs where we can see this object going near a military plane. Then the object comes back and go faster than the airplane. For example, this is New York. Look at that UFO going faster than the airplane. Or here, this is in Mexico, you can see this orb or I think it's an orb going faster than the airplane too. And this is very interesting, this is March this year, uh, they were this is a pilot taking lessons very near Mexico City in Metepec. And they had a camera just in case. And please look what they recorded. You can see many spheres, five spheres like this one, going very near. You saw another one there. I think they were in danger. And as you see, sometimes the airplanes have crashes with something that is unknown. Just very recently in Mexico City, in, in Cancun, Mexico, uh, a big uh, 777 had to come back because they had a crash with something and they didn't know what it was. They had to land again. The invisibility exist. These are experiments in Japan. Uh, these things reflect what is in the back to the front. In this video is the only of its kind where someone recorded with two cameras at the same time, with an infrared camera and a normal camera. And here you can see with the normal camera, you don't see anything, but with the infrared camera, you can clearly see this orb. It proves that sometimes you don't see what is there. This is why it's so important. The only time that somebody has been able to catch that at the same time. All these videos are from UFOs that were not visible with the eyes. They were recorded with in the infrared cameras. All of these. This is a new technology being used to discover them. I think the proposal of uh, Mark uh, D'Antonio, it's his name? It's very interesting 
to use uh, this new technology with the special cameras. This was recorded by my team making a, a, a sky watch near the volcano Popocatépetl. Look this object. It was huge. It flew above them. You are going to be amazed if you use this kind of equipment at night, what you are going to see. Things that you don't see with your own eyes. Oh, the two moving lights. Holy shit. Let me just adjust this. Oh, man. Holy shit. Look at that. Look at them. They're like completely moving. I don't know. You have these two objects flying very slow. You can see some stars in the back, but these are real. And this is very interesting. Uh, this happened in Las Vegas in June last year. Somebody was taking photographs from the Eiffel Tower in Vegas when accidentally they didn't realize this but they got these pictures where you can see this invisible object that is being the, the reflection of the sun allow us. This is not infrared. This is just uh, the sun that discovered the object, even though they didn't see it. And when we compare this video recorded by Antonio Ursi, Antonio Ursi is the best sky watcher in the world. He lives in Milan, in Italy. I think Mufon should invite him to present all his material. He is the best. This is real. This has been tested. And look how similar it is. It's the same object, but in one case it's invisible to the eye, and the other no. This is a second witness. This is November the 9th. The other was June the 13th. This is not, it's the same object again. In Vegas, again. Accidentally, again, and they never saw it. They saw it when they saw the picture. This is accidental. Now, let's see some squadrons flying together. Recorded with infrared cameras or night vision cameras. Look at this. Look this group of objects flying very, very fast. Look this group of objects uh, inside the crater of, or very near the crater of this uh, volcano in Ireland. Look at this group. Look the speed. We call them squadrons. They are here. Look at this. Look the speed. Look the behavior. This is uh, near Mexico City. Look this group. This is uh, also infrared camera, invisible to the eye. This is in Leon, Mexico.
Then he's recording an airplane, it's the same witness. When suddenly he discovers this group. This is in California. And this is above the airport in Mexico City. Above the airport. Very near airplanes. Look the movement, look what they do. We asked the American, Mexican authorities to do something about it because one of these days we're going to have a huge accident because of this. Well, now it's the volcano Popocatépetl near Mexico City, 40, 30 miles from Mexico City. And this is, camera is from Televisa, the big network, and they have a camera recording 30, 30 frames per second. And look at this, recorded on the 25th of October, 2012. Nobody was able to explain this. Nobody was able. And it was recorded with two cameras. The other was the scientist camera from the National University. This is the real movement. This is the real timing of this object going inside. What is the size of this? Uh, two days after that, the 27th of October 2012, just uh, at the same time that Hurricane Sandy was going to New York, three different radars, the radar from the National System, Meteorological System in Mexico, the radar from NOAA, and the radar from uh, Intellicast from uh, the Weather Channel got these images of this, um, how can I say, magnetic energy moving from very near the volcano in Mexico and creating this. You can see Sandy on the right. Look at this uh, energy coming from the area of the volcano and making a spiral and moving and you can see two spirals, one above the other, moving in different directions, as was registered by the radar. This is from the National Weather System in Mexico. This is from NOAA. Look at this. This is from the crop circles in England, and it's very, very similar. What is it? It is considered that it's a message, a message to the seed of light, of life. This happened just two months before the end of the Mayan calendar. And we interpret this as the beginning of a new era. It's like a, a, like a new being was gonna be born, a new beginning. Nobody has been able to give me an explanation, not the Mexican meteorologist, no specialist the, from the U.S. Nobody has seen something like this ever anywhere in the world. What I think for me are signals, signals, contact, messages. This is a new video from February 20. Second, 2013, that's also the volcano of Popocatépetl. The activity of the volcanoes is related to the presence of UFOs. No question around that. Every time a volcano is active, the UFOs are there. Why? I don't know if they want to get energy from there. This is, uh, if I remember correctly, this is uh, from... Uh, from the scientist camera, you can see the same object, the camera, it doesn't have the same definition. This, this is the same day, the same, the same thing. It happens all the time. 
we have the two images and they match. The scientists and Televisa, no question of this reality, no question. And again happened in May 30th, 2013, the camera got this image and you can see the UFO going around and coming back and going inside the crater. Why they go inside a crater, I don't have any idea. I don't know if you do, but is there a base there? Uh, do they use it? Uh, are they solid? Can they go inside? I mean, there are so many questions. If we didn't have the image, nobody would believe this. But you see, when this is presented in the national news, with a skeptic journalist telling, what is this? And, and, and then you present the experts saying, oh, well, it's a, it's a meteorite, you know? It's a, oh, well, we don't know, it's a, probably a galaxy fallen. Oh, well, that was a good one, don't you think? A galaxy fallen, and she did it like this, you know? Okay, well, let's continue. Uh, this is uh, 25th of July. 2015, now is the volcano, Volcán de Fuego, the fire volcano, which is very active. And this was recorded by Webcams de Mexico. It's a camera that is all the time there and gets pictures every second or so. And it has to be a huge object because the camera is like seven, eight miles away from the volcano. And the same camera got this sequence with this object. As you can see, it's not that they are here. They know everything about us. They watch us. They go inside our houses. They, they are there. They are invisible to the eye. They have an incredible technology. They use mother chips. They come around the sun. This is again another evidence from the volcano, volcan, the fuego, the fire volcano. And this has been happening probably forever. I'm going to present you some images from 1958 where you will be able to see the same kind of objects go uh, very close to the volcano de fuego. It's a very, very active uh, volcano. It's uh, erupting most of the time, a very dangerous one. And they are there con constantly. This is from 1958, as you can see. The pictures seem to be real. They were found in a file, a very old file, and they were given to us. And this happened very near Volcán de Fuego, the fire volcano in Colima. On June 2015, the national... Now, just uh, very fast, probably some of you know that I presented a very special event in Mexico City I'm very proud of that, on May the 5th, 2015. Uh, there were 7,000 people there in an auditorium for 10,000, we got 7,000. And it's the most spectacular event ever in the history of this phenomenon. And we did it because we got two pictures, and we took these two pictures to a witness the only survivor from Roswell. And this man told us, this is what I saw in 1947. Then I took these pictures to forensic experts everywhere in the United States. They didn't want to even look at the pictures. Then Mexicans from the National Institute of Forensic Science, uh, an expert from the Navy, the head of the department of the forensic, the forensic department of the Navy, 
and some others, uh, anatomist from the National University of Mexico, saw the pictures and they said, this is not human. We presented the pictures. There was a placard. In that placard, we never, we failed to read the placard. We really failed. I failed because I sent it to experts in Mexico and they couldn't. Don Schmidt and Tom Carey did it with many experts in the USA and they couldn't. Adam Dew, a journalist who owned part of the pictures, did the same and they couldn't do it. But just after 48 hours, we presented the, this case. Somebody was able to read that placard. I think they did it from long before. They were waiting for us. And then we could read in the placard, mummified body of a two-year-old. However, as I'm going to present you, the body of this creature was not a two-year-old. The size that we measured in many different ways was 47 inches. And they said this was a mummy found by Palmer, an uh, archaeologist, in 1896 in Montezuma Castle. And everybody was convinced was that. However, we were able to find the real pictures from the finding by Palmer. And we also found the documents, the official documents of the finding, stating that this creature, this boy, was just 29 inches long. It means that it's different. I'm, I don't know, I cannot say for sure this is not a mummy. I don't think it's a mummy because the experts told me this is not human and they told me why. They analyzed these pictures for months and they are very sure this is not a mummy. They think it's not human. And the only witness from Roswell says this is what I saw. Even though I was viciously attacked by many people in the USA, I lost many friends because they thought I was crazy by presenting this. But I still believe this is not a mummy and this is very probable because if I have to believe the only witness, only person who can say what it was in Roswell in 1947 is Eleazar Benavides. He is the only one. And he was viciously attacked too. There were people asking for others to go to his house, throw rocks, do something, make him change his opinion. I never seen anything like this happen to anyone because we were trying to present the truth. And I'm very disappointed from many friends and investigators, so-called investigators in the USA because of what they did. I did it not for the fame of the money, I was attacked. They said that I won a million dollars. I lost and I stayed publicly. I told Erika Lux in an interview, I lost a hundred thousand dollars and I didn't care because I had to do a real event, a real, to attract the attention of the world. Unfortunately, there were many that were not. They didn't agree with me and they tried to destroy the case. And it's a shame, a real shame because we in this community have to be together. It's the only way to have results. It's the only way to succeed. succeed. But not everybody thinks the same. It's unfortunate. Let me present you something. We don't have too much time. This is a little capsule that I present, that I made for you. It's just uh, six minutes long and it's in English. National Park Service in the United States presented the photo showing the amateur archaeologist S.L. Palmer, who discovered the mummified corpse of a child at the ruins of Montezuma Castle in Arizona. This letter was also published. It describes the finding, fully detailed. It reads, a bowl was found at the left of the head and a small bow and arrows on the right side.
the corpse was wrapped in cotton clothing, which was found well preserved. Investigator Anthony Borgalia suggested that the corpse in Bill Witness was the mummy discovered by Palmer. Nevertheless, this picture is the definitive evidence of this finding's place with the child's size and features. Now we know it is different from the Bill Witness being. Two pictures came up recently. This black and white picture from 1986 from the National Park Service and another photograph taken by Frank Hadley in 1956. They're different from Palmer's original mummy. Watch the black and white picture from 1986. It's not the same corpse from Palmer's mummy. And in Frank Hadley's picture, compared to a child's mummy, two different faces are seen. S.L. Palmer's mummy in this picture was identified by biologist José de la Cruz. Its authenticity is unquestionable. Not only by being in the very same moment of its discovery, but by its precise and written record of the general conditions it was found, Palmer's mummy and the non-human corpse from B. Witness are different. This is investigator Tom Carey's conclusion. It's not what is shown on our slide because what is shown on our slide is at least three and a half feet tall, somewhere between three and a half to four feet tall. This particular child mummy, as according to the report, and you can see it in the picture, is very small. And S.J. Palmer reports it as being 29 inches tall. Forensic science teacher Jose Salce talks about Palmer's mummy and its importance. He emphasized that it is different from Bill Witness's being. I'm very glad these evidences are finally given light and we're talking about two totally different bodies and it has nothing to do with what was shown in Bill Witness. The detailed documents about a mummified child were declassified. A 29 inches long size was established by 9 inches wide. Research made by specialists in Mexico took several objects in the same image as reference took an approximate size of 4 feet, a considerable difference compared to the 29 inches from Palmer's mummy. Shortly after the B. Witness case was presented, some investigators decodified an unreadable plate that was shown next to the corpse. This is the written message. Mummified corpse from a 2-year-old child. It is difficult to establish why this sign was placed next to a corpse which size and features from a relatively cool specimen do not match a two-year-old child. It was possibly an attempt to misinform people watching it without it even being clear why it was placed there. It is imperative to obtain the original photograph and transparencies to determine the authenticity of these two pictures, with which it was intended to disqualify the photographic evidence and the scientific investigation about a non-human corpse presumably rescued in Roswell. All of this according to Eliasar Benavides' testimony. You are the only people who can tell us if this is close to what you saw. Let me say it very clearly that uh, this does resemblance very, very much what I saw. With the only exception that at that particular time some of these some of these uh, creatures were still alive. A long time for history, you say this is it. Yes. I think that you people got some good evidence that uh, I lack that you have. And I think um, either, 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 either people have given the opportunity at that time, it could have been better. If this is really one of the found beings in Roswell, it could be one of the most important evidences ever to be found. If this is something else, it would be very interesting to know how a human being could survive with all these much anomalies. Because we presented our point of view, based on our research, we received countless insults of all kind. The investigators' community, from a phenomenon which is not yet accepted by scientists nor government, is deeply divided. 
S.L. Palmer's picture shows a different corpse. That the corpse shown in Bill Witness is not the two-year-old mummy found in 1896. This crew invites everyone to forget about our differences and find together the answer to this mystery, yet far from being solved. Not to join the investigation of extraterrestrial life, we're not going to know anything at all. Uh, this is the body, as you can see, it has just six ribs, it doesn't have a wrist, it doesn't have an elbow, it has so many anomalies, like 20 different anomalies, it doesn't have a knee. We reconstructed this, this was not taken in consideration, we did it very carefully with forensic experts and we were able to recreate this. <clears throat> as you can see, we gave life somehow to this corpse. I don't have the time to discuss all of this, all the details, but uh, with this opportunity, I just wanted to let you know all the work we did and that we still believe that this is very important and shouldn't be buried under all the accusations that were done to us. We gave life to this face, as you can see. And I don't think this is a child. There is so much to investigate yet, this case is not over, at least not in my case, and I will continue investigating until finding the truth, because the truth is all that matters. We are getting closer. The increase in the F occurrences of an alien presence around the world suggests the existence of an agenda, a plan. It is difficult to determine whether this approach is motivated by our development, our technology, or by their concerns about major changes that we are creating in our world. It is clear that we will face enormous challenges in the coming years, overpopulation, the mass extinction of species, climate change, pollution in all parts of the world are some of the great dangers that humanity will face in the process of evolution towards the development of a society more just and sustainable. Towards a society that will be able to live in harmony with itself and with its environment. Now we know that there are millions of worlds like ours just in our own galaxy. Life develops and persists in the most extreme environments. Today it's impossible not to see that in all worlds there is a form of life. Not all life develops, but when the conditions are right, it thrives and develops intelligence. Intelligent life evolves until finding its permanence and sustainability, then moves on to develop the technology for building a complex society that attains the knowledge which allows them to travel freely to the farthest corners of the universe. A society that is able to overcome inequality and disease, these are beings that can prolong their existence for centuries or millennia. 
They can reach other worlds to bring the good. Only good allows this level of development. Only creative societies survive persist. Only they can go on and advance. Maybe they represent themselves as divine beings bringing their expertise to others. The examples in our world and in our history prove it. The visitors are waiting for us. They wait day when we find our way of true spiritual development. The day when we can truly understand that sustainability can only be achieved through kindness and love. We have a long way to go. Yet we will have to face our mistakes and learn that only united, hand in hand, we will find the true meaning of our existence and then return to God. And we will find the paradise we have always dreamt of. For now it is possible to think that our descendants will have that opportunity and that they will reach heaven and understand the divine will. Thank you very much.